The Tom Woods Show, episode 1515. Prepare to set fire to the index card of allowable opinion. Your daily dose of liberty education starts here. The Tom Woods Show. Folks, the great and heroic Bob Murphy has a brand new book out, Contra Krugman, Smashing the Errors of America's Most Famous Keynesian. This thing is going to give you a ton of intellectual ammunition. Check it out at Contra Krugman Book. Dot com. And I am the narrator of the audiobook version. How about that? You can get that for free through the Audible offer at TomWoodsAudio.com. At any rate, get all the details at ContraKrugmanBook.com. Hi, everybody. Tom Woods here. I am thrilled, as always, to be talking to Lou Rockwell. And, of course, Lou and I have to review. And we don't have to, but we've taken this task upon ourselves to do this. We have to review last night's debate among the Democrats. We did this all throughout the 2016 election cycle. We reviewed the Republican debates in that case, and now we're doing the Democratic ones. Lou Rockwell, of course, is the publisher of LouRockwell.com. He is the founder and chairman of the Mises Institute. He's formerly, obviously formerly, because Ron Paul's retired from Congress now, uh, chief of staff to Congressman Ron Paul, and just a tremendous benefactor of uh, the libertarian movement with all the things he's done and the resources that he's made available to the world for free on Mises.org alone make Lou a hero, but just his intransigence in favor of liberty and his refusal to get swept away by jingoism after 9-11, I mean, just to stand his ground, this is a good man. And uh, so anyway, I'm sorry, I'm getting sentimental here. I'm delighted to welcome Lou back onto the show. Lou, thanks for doing this, and I'm glad to be talking to you. Tom, great to be with you. You know, we were saying just now before recording that maybe there really isn't a need to do one of these for every one of these Democratic debates because it's like the same darn debate over and over and over again. So um, maybe we'll get a sense of the feedback from the public, you know, on social media or on my site or whatever and see what they want us to do. Because I think we could do, a you know, one of these every now and then. But instead, let's just have you on. We'll talk about what's really interesting in the news <laughs> instead. And also because, frankly, Lou, you know, you've been a friend for a long time, a benefactor, a real supporter of mine. And frankly, I feel guilty doing this to you every single month. <laughs> so. No, <laughs> no I, it, you know, it, uh, there were some interesting things last night, but uh, they weren't three hours worth. No, no, that's for sure. All right. Let's uh, let's start with a basic uh, overview and then we'll get into a few specific issues that that jumped out at me. Who, who do you think comes out ahead? Well, actually, you know what? Before we do that, before we do that, there is one thing that is that stands out to me so much that I think we need to start with that. The question about whether Elizabeth Warren and her health care plan will involve a tax increase on the middle class. They cannot get that answer out of her. And, <laughs> and they try. I mean one candidate after another, and they all favor taxes. And they they I, don't I, mind if she says yes. I loved but, it when she would start her answer, let's be clear. And yeah, then, of and course, then she, she was never clear. As <laughs> opaque as possible. So she would say, I'm going to be lowering costs. <laughs> and costs, of course, she means that what she's trying to say is exactly what Bernie's saying, which is that your taxes may go up, but under my plan, because your health care costs will go down so much on net your individual household costs will go down. Now, whether that's true or not, that's not, not the point. That's what he's obviously saying. And that's obviously what she means. And she can't bring herself to be a human being and say it. it it's, it's bizarre. Well, in fact, I thought she really um, looked slightly rattled last night when she was attacked so often by the other candidates. I, indeed. And yet, Surely you'd think somebody on her staff had to say to her, now listen, as the increasingly <laughs> presumptive, you know, front runner, you, you need to be prepared for this. Yeah. So that was crazy. But, but so, okay, so what did you think overall? Like who comes out ahead? Who's a loser, if any? Uh, I mean, some of them just are going to stay right where they were. But but anybody, you think, either way? Well, all the, all the media is saying that Pete Buttigieg was the winner. Uh, I must say I don't see that, although I, I thought he did well. Uh, I thought Andrew Yang was uh, did very well, and I think that was sort of planned because they gave him so much time. Uh, I think he, I'll, I haven't seen the figures yet, but my guess is he had the second amount of time as compared to Elizabeth Warren. And uh, he's very articulate, very smart, um, uh, very dangerous. And uh, he's, you know, he's, he's interesting. Not all his positions are crazy, but he's, he's, uh, I thought, I thought that, uh, 
he was a winner. The losers, I thought, you know, Warren was the big loser. I thought she looked very bad. My guess is she's really going to drop in the polls. I think that uh, she wasn't able to handle it. And I, and um, so that's, that's a good thing because she's actually a communist. Uh, I thought Biden lost. Biden was so, sort of, um, uh, what was it, Drudge put it, uh, faded into the background. He, he really wasn't present in the, in the debate. I thought that uh, Kamala Harris, thank goodness, was a big loser. And uh, she'll continue to drop. What is she at about 4% now? She's going to continue to go down. She's not very smart. Uh, and she's uh, thoroughly evil. And uh, so that's, but all these, pe- all these people are one degree or another of evil. It's so they're, they're, uh, it would be a good thing if, the, if regular Americans actually had watched this thing and paid attention to it. Because these people are so awful. I mean, they really are despicable, and um, that's what's that's what the Democrats are going to put up one of these people, unless Hillary, of course, comes in, which is very, very possible. Oh, okay, yeah, I did want to ask you about that because we hear, uh, you know, you'll see an article about this here and there saying that if you add up the sorts of things she's been saying with the kinds of events she's been holding, then maybe a pattern emerges. But the kinds of people saying this are kind of on the fringes. Now, I've, you know, look. I'm on the fringes here. I don't want to put these people down, but <laughs> but I'm saying it's not like CNN is saying she's on the verge of announcing. So I hardly know what to make of that. Well, I think it, it's if she were to do it, uh, and and be in, and when she have you know many of these people are running against her in the primaries, she might be able to win. I think that uh, probably would be good for Trump if she were the nominee, and uh, she was, is so awful. But. Um, if I had to bet, I would say she's not going to run, but I think there's a chance she'll run and it would make everything a lot more fun. Yeah, absolutely would. She's fun to hate. Yeah, yeah, she definitely is. And it would be interesting to see how she positions herself in this pack because it would be, you know, obviously somebody like Bernie could point out the difference between the Hillary Clinton of 2016 and the Hillary Clinton of 2020. <laughs> you know, when in 2016, when Bernie looked like some outlier, she could just parrot the establishment talking points. And then all of a sudden she's going to try to sound like Bernie. You know, it, he, he doesn't, he lacks the charisma to point that out effectively, but that would be something worth saying. I did think it was interesting the other day that uh, her, her daughter in answering her question said, absolutely a, a person with a beard and male genitals can be a woman. And Hillary said, you know, something like, uh, baby, I'm just old-fashioned, but I just can't see that. Okay, okay. now that's a, that's a politician answer in this yes. day and age. Yes, it is. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so I think the the whole trans business, maybe people are, are sick of it. They ought to be sick of it. And uh, my guess is that would help her if she would take that position. Yeah, whether it's it's there or it's just a bunch of positions that the Democrats have committed themselves to, that <laughs> all all Trump has to do, like the whole election could turn on on these minor things, but he would pick one out and just hammer it home over and over. What in fact, you know, the Babylon B website where mm-hmm. it's just satire, uh, but they're it's very funny satire. One of their recent headlines was something along the lines of. Um, Trump 2020 campaign um, simply to replay unedited portions of the Democratic debates, you know, and to promote Trump. Like <laughs> that's all they have to do, given the positions these people are committing themselves to. And and I think Mayor Pete doesn't quite put it this way, but he if he'd be very effective if he did. Uh, there's a big difference between the people on that stage and the registered Democrats who live in Ohio. You know, <laughs> that's virtually right. none of whom are interested in in those sorts of issues. I mean, just none. They don't wish people ill, but that's not their primary concern. Yang, I thought, was effective because he he did not sound like the others at all in the points he made, in his knowledge. Uh, he just didn't sound like them. He, well, I think they, he's, sm- he's smarter than they are, for one thing. He definitely is. I mean, they all sounded like they'd been memorizing passages from the same script. <laughs> and he was saying things like, well, look, the following countries have tried a wealth tax, and it just it didn't raise the revenue they expected, and they had implementation problems. Okay, I don't think anybody on that stage even knew that. Or he actually had arguments against uh, Bernie's view that, well, if automation causes job loss, why the federal government will just create jobs <laughs> for everybody. And Yang said that, you know, forgive me, but that doesn't really sound like what the 21st century economy ought to look like, <laughs> you know. And plus, what if you stink at your job? Like, what do we, how does this really work in practice? So, th- so that was good. No, no, I, th- I thought that he was very effective, very smart. He had a little uh, math 
uh, sign in his lapel. So I thought that was interesting, too. He's probably the only guy on that stage who knows math. Yeah, no kidding. No kidding. Uh, but then, the, you know, there, last night you could hear a lot of the modern Democrats, you know, they're where, where they, they sound different, let's say, from how Bill Clinton sounded in the 90s. But at the same time, you, you heard plenty of throwback to the old Democrats, like we need more unions and stuff. In this day and age, look, you, you, it's over. <laughs> Private sector unions, <laughs> that, that's, that's not coming back, especially in a global economy. That's, that, that is dead on arrival. There's nothing, nothing's going to happen with that. So you would hear stuff like that. Or honest, you know, it would be this or that problem that we can solve with with some more money without acknowledging that enormous sums have been spent on these problems in the past. And the result is that you still think the problem is so bad that you're complaining about it on a debate stage. I mean, that's that's really all they have to say. It's 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 shocking to me how little they have to say that's different or interesting or not predictable or or could be easily scripted. I could script everything that's coming out of their mouths. I did think it was interesting that they seem to have calmed down some. They all got their consultants' advice. So nobody talked about open borders. Nobody talked about um, providing every illegal alien with health care and welfare and similar kinds of things that in previous uh, debates they've all endorsed. And, of course, Trump will have the the tapes of those for his his campaign ads uh, so that— you know, they tried to be more, is moderate the word? I don't know. But uh, I, I don't think it really was successful because there's, I don't believe anybody was watching that thing, late, Tom, last night, except you and me. I don't believe any regular person watched that debate at all. Well, I think the entire Tom Wood show listenership was not listening because they knew that suckers like Lou and Tom would be doing it for them. <laughs> so that's, a, I, I know for a fact that, that that's the case. I maybe it might be worth saying a little something about uh, Tulsi and foreign policy and stuff. But we'll do that after this quick break. Folks, I am in the business of improving people's lives and not just through libertarian education. I like to recommend things to my folks that are going to make them happier and more successful. And in all the years I've been doing this, I have never promoted a product or service that impresses me more, that has more potential to improve your life, or that frankly is more of a miracle than Skillshare. Skillshare is like the Netflix of online learning. Get one membership and that gives you access to over 25,000 classes in almost any area you can think of that will make you a more sought after employee or will help you to build a side hustle or even just enrich your enjoyment of your existing hobbies. You'll find classes in business, technology, design, illustration, photo and film, writing, and many, many more categories. Well, you can join the millions of students already learning on Skillshare today with a special offer just for my listeners. Get two months of Skillshare for free. That's right. Skillshare is offering Tom Wood Show listeners two months of unlimited access to over 25,000 classes for free. To sign up, go to Skillshare.com slash Woods free. Again, go to Skillshare.com slash Woods free to start your two months now. That's Skillshare.com slash Woods free. Okay, so let's talk about foreign policy. It did come up just in the context of Syria and the Kurds and that that whole thing. And I did an episode on that with Scott Horton about what's the real story about the Kurds and, and Trump and all that. I did an episode on that. I'm linking to it at TomWoods.com slash 1515, which is the show notes page for today. So people should definitely listen to that because Scott is my go-to guy for all this stuff. Uh, and I also have an episode on impeachment and how strong is the case. And everybody on that stage is talking about, like, oh, yeah, he broke this law and that law. Well, okay, <laughs> well, I, I talked to Kevin Goodsman, and he has rather a different view. So I'll link to that episode also at tomwoods.com slash 1515. But anyway, so that was the brief discussion of foreign policy that we got. What did you think about that discussion? Well, of course, they, uh, Buttigieg was, was, uh, was wonderful. The entire media is praising him salaming him because he differed with with um, Tulsi Gabbard and said that, uh, no, no, we have to keep the troops in Syria forever because of the Kurds. And it was irresponsible and terrible to say they and be agreeing with Trump that they should be removed. And of course, she was, a, of, course, of course, she's right. Um, but none of these people believe that any of the troops should ever be removed from any of the 180 countries they're in. Just keep them there and maybe go up to 207 or something, whatever the full, the full number would be. And... Um, it's 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 really horrific. Uh, they they all what weren't the Democrats at one point allegedly the peace party? I mean that's entirely gone. Uh, it's 
the candidates of the past who would talk about these issues. There's just Tulsi Gabbard now. And um, I think she got very little time. Maybe she got the least time of any of the candidates. I thought she did fine. Uh, I didn't, of course, agree with her about some of the things she was saying. Uh, but I thought she was articulate and she was dressed well. She was the best looking, best dressed candidate on the stage. But um, is that enough to get her up in the polls enough so she will be in the next debate? Um, my guess is unfortunately not. It was interesting to see her try in vain to get various candidates to commit to saying that, yes, we should bring an end to you know this intervention. And all she got were slippery responses. And the thing is, we had just witnessed all night long, as I said at the beginning, Elizabeth Warren managing to evade whether she's going to raise taxes. She's not going to give you, you know, you're not going to get any straight answer out of this woman. I mean, nice try, Tulsi. We appreciate that. But it's, I think she'd be an interesting person to, once this is all over, to talk to about if she's willing to be honest about the Democratic Party at that point. The same way Ron Paul was honest about the Republicans. Like, what did you learn about your party? I mean, I bet she didn't realize how bad it was, frankly, until she got involved in this process, saw the treatment that she was receiving, saw the slipperiness of the other candidates. I'd be very interested in her thoughts on that. No, and she mentioned, of course, that this was the New York Times-CNN debate and that the New York Times ran a vicious smear piece on her the other day. And uh, <laughs> they said she's being supported by far-right Republicans and far-right, uh, you know, whatever's, and therefore she's entirely evil. Is that true? I guess there are right-wing people um, who like her. I'm one of them. But... Uh, um, it was it, it was that was it was a it was a very nasty piece. It was intended to hurt her, of course. And uh, the New York Times, of course, is the warmonger time. So you, I guess you can't be surprised uh, that they hate anybody who ever mentions the word peace or thinks the U.S. should ever take the troops out of any place. I'm not even for keeping the troops in Staten Island myself, but of course I'm I'm pretty unusual. You know the um, the whole crazy right wingers are supporting Tulsi thing. It's uh, first of all I don't really know of anybody who's enthusiastically supporting her. It's just, you know, the whole package. It's the, look, I know that it's nice to use the term right wing as a boogeyman term to scare people. But obviously, the, whoever these people are, you know, you describe yourself as one of them as having at least a rooting interest in this matter of Tulsi. It's just because you're anti-war. And they would never put it that way in the paper because there are still some Americans for whom anti-war sounds kind of honorable and principled. Mm -hmm, so true. instead, it has to be this scary boogeyman term, right? wing. Well, you know, even people you think of as boogeymen might occasionally be right about something. You know, that that's not impossible. The boogeyman sometimes is <laughs> right about something. Boogeyman can be sound <laughs> on an occasional issue. Uh, who do you think is the um, candidate Trump is rooting for, of the plausible ones. Uh, who, who do you think he re really wants? I think he'd like Elizabeth Warren. He'd also like Bernie. So that uh, I think it's one of those two. Okay. Now, see, I was thinking because Biden, I didn't find, you know, he was kind of tripping over his words. And I think that's going to get worse, not better. So I, I thought there was a chance there. But with, okay, so what do you think it is about Warren that he would, I mean, obviously he can go back to the Native American thing if that still has any purchase. And of course, she's, you know, she's told other lies. I mean, she, she, uh, in all her campaign speeches up until recently has said that, that uh, when she was a teacher, she became visibly pregnant. And as, as, and the uh, principal of the school, as principals always did in those days, was to f tell her to get out, you're gone, you know, get out of here. And uh, of course, it tur <laughs> turns out that the school board extended her a contract and said that they were very disappointed when she didn't, didn't take it. And so this oh, is just, geez, I didn't hear that. Yeah. Just another lie. And of course, these things are never publicized when uh, her lies. So it's, uh, and then there's of course all the Indian stuff uh, of which there's a rich load. Uh, so she, uh, I think that uh, Trump would make mincemeat of her in, in that sense, but she's a communist. I mean, she wants to seize people's property. I mean, she's, she's, uh, I, I think she's probably, even more of a leftist than Bernie, although she calls herself a capitalist, although she, she, uh, she has various adjectives. Um, I think that she just is, uh, is a horrible, a horrible leftist. And I think that uh, Trump would take her down. And also because I think that he, he must feel that she's easily stimulated. I mean, he can, he could make her sort of go off the rails by things he would say. Yeah. 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 Maybe that's not true of Bernie. 
Well, because Bernie's constantly in a state of agitation. <laughs> There'd be no way to tell that he was worked up. It's, it's all the same persona. But with her, you're right. I could, I could see her kind of losing it at one point. But also the contrast, you can just imagine how the debates would turn. You know, Elizabeth Warren has a plan for that. She's got a plan for everything. <laughs> I, first of all, I guess it's just because I'm a libertarian that that creeps me out. I mean, I don't understand why that wouldn't creep somebody. I've got a plan for that. Because a plan basically means I'm going to order a lot of people around. I mean, that's what a plan is. And that's right. That, that creeps me out. But but imagine her with her plans and her figures and her empirical examples and all that. And then Trump just saying, uh, you know, making some remark about her being a Native American. <laughs> you know, it right, has nothing to do with anything she's saying. He derails the whole thing. <laughs> yeah, it's very funny. So... Is your prediction at this point that it is going to be Warren? I, I think not. I think it could be Yang. Certainly, I think Yang is going to be on the ticket. He could be the vice presidential candidate. Whoa. You say Warren is the president. But uh, I think... Uh, he would add real strength to that Oh, ticket. no, this would be a brilliant choice, unfortunately. I never even thought of that till you mentioned just now. That would be very strong. Uh, and, I, and I say that, again, not because I have a real fondness for him, but because he clearly, he comes, he does not come across as rehearsed at all. No. He's just a guy who knows stuff and he speaks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, and and this, is a, this is a novelty that we're, we're observing here. Yeah, it's true. And by the way, on Bernie, I mean, I, it's got to be the case that at least a few percentage points have been lost to him because of his health. Well, and I, th I thought that he actually was sort of slightly toned down last night. That's hard to understand in, in Bernie terms, but he was slightly less of a yeller last night. And I thought his cheeks were sunken. I thought that he obviously this is a very tough thing to have a heart attack. I mean, it's nothing against him. And in fact, it's, it speaks volumes for him that he was able to be in the debate period. Yes. Uh, but I think that, um, you know, they asked him about his age. They asked Biden about his age. Interestingly, they asked Elizabeth Warren about her age, pointing out that she at 71, she would be the oldest uh, president ever to be inaugurated for the first term. And, um, of course, everybody s s dodged those questions. But uh, she is older, and I thought last night she looked older. And whether that was because everybody was attacking her or whether it was another reason, but uh, she just she didn't do well, and I think that, that she was hurt last night. So that was good. Was there a drudge poll? There was a drudge poll, and, and uh, uh, it had Tulsi Gabbard winning. People like me voting for that, right? But what about Yang, Yang? Yang was came in second. A close. He was he was a massive second, and Warren and Biden and all the rest of them were way down in the the low single digits. Okay, I mean, I know how unscientific that poll is, but it always generates an interesting result. Yes, very interesting, and yeah. I think Yang, I mean, is is uh, is the comer. Wow, this is going to be very interesting. I wonder how he's polling in New Hampshire. You know, I have no idea about any of those questions, but. Uh, yeah. He's an impressive guy, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. All right, well, I think we'll, we'll just uh, wrap things up there because I would rather gouge my eyes out than continue to <laughs> think about this episode uh, of, of, of my life. But, but I appreciate uh, your joining me for this episode of the podcast, certainly. And uh, we'll see what we're going to do in the future. But it doesn't mean we're going to have, I hope, less Lou than we would have had before. It's just we'll, we'll talk about other things. We'll see what people want us to do. But thanks so much, Lou, for doing this. Tom, thank you for asking me. All right, folks, I record episodes of The Tom Wood Show five days a week, so you get lots of opportunities to learn great libertarian stuff to use to smash your enemies. So make sure and subscribe to the program over at tomwoods.com slash apple. And also, let me give you a freebie if in case you have not picked this one up. I am very proud of this one. I have a free ebook called Our Enemy, the Fed, and it answers a lot of the arguments that your friends are going to make. Well, before the Fed, everything was unstable and this, and that, whatever, whatever it is, these sorts of things they say. This ebook just smashes all of them. So how do you get it? Come on now. Just think about it. What, what domain name you suppose Old Woods here managed to scrounge up for this one? Answer. OurEnemyTheFed.com. I mean, that is just, a, I'm so thrilled I own that. OurEnemyTheFed.com is where you should go to get this free ebook. Enjoy that. I'll see you tomorrow. Become a smarter libertarian in just 30 minutes a day. Visit TomWoods.com to subscribe to the show for free, and we'll see you next time. Like the sound of the Tom Woods Show? My audio production is provided by Podsworth Media. Check them out at podsworth.com.